what I want to do is really look into why did I have these spikes and what does this mean? This top graph is my CO2 in parts per million. All right, I was accidentally poisoning my family and my smart thermostat as well as my smart home system not only helped bring that to my attention, but also helped confirm you know, what was causing it and how to stop it from happening. So let me go up to my thermostat real fast, show you that, and then I'm gonna show you how I found out about it um, and what the cause was and also how I made sure I fixed it so that you can learn from this as well. All right, so here we are at the thermostat. Now this is Ecobee Premium, and you can see right up here in the top, it tells you that it's clean. Right beside the, if I click on that, it shows me my current status. And so it says it's clean, you know, not all the way clean, but then it also tells you estimated pollutants and that includes uh, VOCs as well as carbon dioxide. So you can see all right now it says low um, and it does some kind of, um, I guess, calibration that it covers to your house and then it has that as your, like your baseline. And if it changes a lot, it tells you. And that's what happened to me. It, it gave me an alert and showed me that it was poor one day. But so this main floor has a thermostat in the back up there. If you can see it, there is another Ecobee up there actually for the, the second floor. But this main one here does, um, you can see the house is like kind of a story and a half one. So a lot of air volume down here. All right, so this uh, thermostat relative to the garage where the actual uh, cars are, just to give you perspective over here, is right around here in this hallway. That's the door that goes to the garage itself. Now over here as well, I have my uh, wall tablet and this is connected to my smart home stuff. That's run by Home Assistant now. And I actually added another feature. This is all configurable here where you can add all types of information, lights, routines, weather, any of that kind of stuff. Um, but right here in the top right, I added a main floor CO2. So this is a readout that gives you a lot more details than the Ecobee itself. So let me go down to the basement to uh, give you a little more details in a better lighting environment of exactly what I'm doing there with Home Assistant and how it helps um, give you more details about Ecobee as well as um, other information. All right, so first I'll tell you, I've been using Ecobee thermostats for about six years now, ever since I've owned this house. I actually have four Ecobees for different furnaces, including like outbuilding and stuff that I can turn on. But um, for this one, I'm just going to show you, I just recently updated to this new premium one. And the key feature that it has, at least that I care about, there's lots of features, but is this air monitoring system. So if I just go to ecobee.com here and we click thermostats just to show you. All right, I'll show a chart here that has the different uh, Ecobee thermostats that are out there right now. And again, it's this uh, premium, then there's an enhanced one, and then there's a Ecobee 3 Lite one. And each one you get more features and of course the cost goes up as well. I'll put links down below in the video description if you're interested in one of these. But the main thing I cared about for the premium is that it has this indoor air quality monitor which monitors the VOC and the CO2s. It does have some other things in there as far as um, that screen that actually if you have their security system it can play cameras right on it. It also includes a remote sensor and it has your voice assistance built in and Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth calling, that kind of things as well that the other ones do not have. But a little bit of the downside to the Ecobee is that this indoor air quality monitor is a little bit, and in fact all of the interface is designed to be simple and sleek, which is great, but being an engineer I really like the details. And it doesn't give you uh, the raw data for what is your CO2 measurement, like your parts per million. Are for the VOCs either but with home assistant which is a um, home hub that basically you can start to connect devices to so I have like Z-Wave or Zigbee or Wi-Fi smart switches like light switches that I can click on and off I have um, connected alarm system that monitors the doors and that can be connected to uh, home assistance things like Ecobee ring all those other devices, um, most of them have a way to get integrated to Home Assistant as well. And what's cool about it is that it gets you the back, you know, kind of the back end of the um, these different tools. And so you can get a lot more features and data out of them. So that's what I'm going to show you here. If I go to the Home Assistant app on my tablet here, this is actually the same thing that is the tablet on the wall that I showed you up there. Um, that's actually just like an interface that you set up here and you can see in the top right is that um, 
um, CO2 and you can click on it and show that up there on the um, the wall but it's the same thing I can click on it and it will show me a graph now this one shows me looks like it's last eight hours is by default what it shows me but I can go in here to the history tab and then here you can see I already had selected the carbon carbon um, dioxide but I can go in here and just say hey show me it for you know this week for example and it'll start on Sunday and show it through today uh, that spike's actually a funny story because I um, started a fire on Sunday and I had a little bit of backdraft coming in down the chimney and so I filled uh, the den with smoke. I had to open the windows and clear it out. But that's what that uh, spike was. If I keep going back and say um, this month, I can see here, this is my CO2. And so I all I had to do is go in here to choose entity and then I can type in any type of entity that I have attached to my smart home. So for me, it can be light switches, door sensors, all that kind of stuff. For the Ecobee, I can also do things like I'm going to type in the main floor and get the climate. It's going to add this um, other data. And what's really cool about Home Assistant is that it does it. Um, it sizes it. It puts labels. It does all this stuff for you automatically. And what I want to do is really look into why did I have these spikes and what does this mean? This top graph is my CO2 in parts per million for that main floor. Down below it, that's actually my temperature profile as well as the heating um, target and as well as if the actual blower motor is on on the heat or not. So this is how I got the data. And let me show you a uh, PDF summary that I've shown screenshots so um, it's a little bit more clear of going through of what I found out was happening, um, why I was getting CO2 um, going high in my house. All right, so this is what the Ecobee alert looked like on my phone where it gave me an alert that said, hey, your indoor air quality is poor. It says open up a window. Um, and then it shows you the VOCs and the CO2 were high. Now, again, this is, a, um, this is my home assistant app and I took a screenshot and the yellow line I drew across is 1,000 parts per million. I'll talk about why that's important in a second here. And then just to give you an understanding of scale, the red there, that bracket shows you one day. So this is several days. This is four or five days. I think it's five days of data. And you can see there's um, really four days there that I actually are five um, that I actually go above 1,000 parts per million. And specifically that one at the end where it says one day, that one goes up to almost 2,000, and if you look at it, it takes a long time for it to go down. So let me show um, the next thing I did was looking up what is a safe level, because I didn't know what safe level of CO2 or what's normal to have inside of a house. Long story short, I mean, you can read this stuff if you want or look at the cited references I put in there. But basically, staying under 1,000 parts per million is really looks like the agreed upon, that's where you'd want it to be for a well-ventilated or circulated house. Uh, some kind of say the, the EPA kind of says to stay below 800, but uh, in general, you don't have an immediate health uh, issue until about 40,000 parts per million. That's where you'll be immediately harmed. And, and um, um, they say in here that actually 5,000 parts per million is acceptable for daily exposure at work, uh, which I was a little bit surprised from that because they say even at 1,000 to 2,000, you might have um, complaints of drowsiness or poor air quality. So if we go back to my graph that we talked about, again, this is the 1,000. Anything above that, people can start complaining about. And on that uh, day on the end, my wife was actually complaining about um, some slight dizziness, a headache, and um, being just kind of drowsy. And um, so that's, uh, the, you know, the other point to this is this is only measuring, this graph here is only showing you CO2. Obviously, um, you can be getting other uh, toxicities in the air uh, as well with that co2 so i wouldn't expect that extreme of a reaction to just co2 there but i'm sure there's probably some carbon monoxide and other chemicals in the air that maybe was um, causing her um, her symptoms so if we zoom in here a little bit further this is that one day now just zoomed in a bit and you can see there in the morning looks like you know 745 or so it just starts to take off and spike up and then it has this long decay where it draws down and it doesn't get below a thousand until actually 9 p.m. So the entire day from 8 a.m. to um, 9 p.m. Uh, we were well above the 1,000 uh, parts per million number. 
So if I further zoom in, what I did was I went into Home Assistant and I turned on garage door opening and the man door that goes from the house, you know, uh, HVAC controlled air to the garage door. And lo and behold, it wasn't really a surprise to me because I did remote start the car that um, it lines up pretty nicely with when that door is open. Now, in this example, I can also see that my man door that was from the house to the garage is open for 13.3 seconds which isn't that long of a time it takes time to get I got three kiddos and stuff out so I didn't I would never imagine that having the door open for that short of a period of time could actually bring in this much toxicity toxicity but what was happening was I pulled my car in forward so the exhaust tips are pointed out the double door it's a three car attached garage and I did remote started not even for um, probably five minutes and then we hop in the car, you know, go out the door, we hop in, we back out, and we close the garage door. But that obviously was uh, enough time to actually um, pollute the air. And on that, my house does seem to have a bit of a negative pressure. I think ideally, from an HVAC standpoint, you want neutral uh, pressure depending on circumstances. So I do notice I have a little bit of negative pressure, and that's worse when the HVAC is on. Now, I won't get into the, the details of the HVAC on. Technically, actually, with high efficiency, shouldn't um, cause more of a negative pressure, I don't think. But um, there is some um, draft that when you open that garage door or any outside door or window, that you notice air coming into the house. And so I think that is what was happening. So what I was, did here in Home Assistance was I turned on my HVAC monitors to show that, sure enough, when I opened that door on that day, showing that vertical yellow line. I had both the main floor and the upstairs, they were actively on and blowing air. And I just know from experience that that's when I have a strongest negative pressure pull on the house. So that's, um, I kind of equated that to being one of the reasons why that specific one was worse than some of the other ones that were out there. Now, if I look at some other ones that were also kind of bad and they had a long decay meaning I thought that a lot of um, uh, of the garage air came into the house they also had both HVAC you know main floor and upstairs on uh, in this one as well now what I did is look at one of the quick spikes that went up and then went back down and on this one the HVAC was not on when one of my so my car is a internal combustion that's what ice leave ice return means is internal combustion engine my wife actually drives an electric vehicle, so obviously it's not emitting any um, tailpipe emissions there. And on the ice return, I do remember actually short idling inside the garage before I turned the car off. I think I was doing something on my phone while it was still connected to the car. And that's what I contributed to that spike uh, going up. But what was kind of nice seeing about that one is that the spike actually went back down uh, fairly quickly. And... Um, you know, again, I equated, this is how I kind of learned. I said, okay, I'm pretty sure it's tied to negative pressure and just a volume of air getting pulled in from the garage to the house. So now I say, hey, I understand the problem. Uh, let's change my behaviors, try to fix this. Obviously, I do not want to be uh, pulling in all that stuff um, to the house. So my new strategy is definitely always pull in. I used to actually back into the garage because I, I like that better for, for leaving. But then I start the car up and I immediately put it in gear and get out of the garage. If um, I'm here in Michigan, so if it gets super cold, maybe I'll have to start it up, back it out, and let it warm up outside if I need to do that for the for the young kids to uh, to go off to school. But then when I also when I come back home, I make sure I park and turn it off right away, and then I delay my garage door closing. Uh, before I would like come in, I would park and I'd hit the garage door close button in the vehicle right away now I wait until I get inside and I hit the wall button off so here's an example of just changing that behavior and um, across here it's probably hard for you to see on the screen but this uh, graph on the top showing the co2 again is from 550 parts per million to 850 parts per million and meaning that that entire range there is what EPA and everyone else says is safe and good for indoor air. And you can see that it actually never, you can't even find the spike um, when it's when it ramps up here on the left side. That's actually because the HVAC turned off and it, you know, the air kind of gets stagnant. So it looks like when that main floor HVAC's off, it kind of uh, goes up, plateaus, and then when the HVAC kicks on, it actually drops back down. 
So this made me feel good that I think I am actually addressing the problem and that I no longer am going to be poisoning the family with stuff. But again, what I did was I made sure I looked this past week as well, uh, several days there. And again, I am uh, really staying under 800 parts per million. So, you know, I consider myself an intelligent person. I know there's lots of stories out there of people like, you know, don't have carbon monoxide poisoning, don't run generators inside, all that kind of stuff. I know that stuff and I never run generators or cars in general, um, you know, in a closed environment. But I'll be honest, I was quite shocked that having the car, especially with the exhaust pipes one foot from, you know, outside of the garage, that uh, remote starting them with the door open and then just leaving through a man door could cause that much infiltration of the exhaust gases into the house that then lingered there the entire day. Now, granted, I keep the windows closed most of the time, so that doesn't help. But um, it was pretty shocking, so that's why I wanted to share it, and uh, maybe it's a learning experience for you guys as well. And if you, um, uh, you know, do remote start your vehicle in your garage with the even with the door open still be really cognizant of what you're doing and how long you have that man door open and then of course uh if you want to overdo it like i did you can go in there and get um some smart home stuff or eco b so you can really see um what the air quality is inside your house uh, be able to monitor it and look for other uh, problems that might be arising from other you know appliances or utilities that are in your house as well